come back together in this place of gathering that we may complete our day of worship to you. And Father, we pray that you would again uh, be with our hearts and our minds to be receptive of what you have to say to each of us tonight as we continue on the theme of our brokenness and recognizing, Heavenly Father, that some things need to be broken. Father, we pray that we can truly learn to yield ourselves and surrender ourselves to you, that you can have your way with us and mold us and fashion us in accordance to your will and not our own. Be with us tonight. Keep us from the enemy and from all of his devices and keep us from our own selves. May we truly, Heavenly Father, never lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, help us to acknowledge you that you might direct our paths. We ask this prayer in faith and we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we had a great time. Amen. We talked about the fact that we all in this life have some things about us uh, that are broken. And the fact that the world uh, consider things that are broken, despised, and worthless, and they throw things away that are broken. But we have to understand, spiritually speaking, that some things need to be broken. Is that all right? Uh, we have to understand that in our brokenness, we can come uh, to truly acknowledge our true condition and recognize our true need, uh, without which we cannot be healed and made whole or reconciled to God. So in other words, while the world may despise and throw away things that are broken, uh, we recognize this morning that there's great value in brokenness with the Lord. Uh, no matter how difficult and no matter how painful uh, that it may be for us uh, to experience uh, being broken. And that's why I want to call your attention briefly tonight back to Psalm 51 as we uh, work towards verse number 17. And I'm going to try to be brief, but I want us to really uh, prayerfully get the, with all of our getting, get an understanding of what uh, the psalmist David is really uh, bringing out for us and helping us to realize uh, what he's saying and what he's experienced because uh, at some point or another, uh, if you just keep on living as a Christian, at some point you're going to disappoint God. Is that all right? And I don't know about you, but on the times that I've disappointed God, it is not a good feeling. Amen. Is that all right? We, we want to learn uh, through those things that we have to suffer never to disappoint God again. But start with me in verse number 9. If you have it, say amen. Psalm 51, verse number 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness, guiltlessness, and O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. If you play, pay close attention to what he's saying, David is really making a plea to God 
because now he has experienced being broken. And in his brokenness, and as we pointed out this morning, it's only in your brokenness that you can see that you can't do anything, but God is able to do all things. So you see a, a pattern of him asking God, God, I need you, I, but I need you to do this. I can't do it for myself. I need you to do this for me. Is that all right? And he's, he's making this plea, and he's coming to understand that only God, through his divine agency, is able to aid him, is able to help him, is able to assist him. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes we need to be crushed and broken down to understand that only God can aid and assist us in what we really need. Is that all right? You see, in verse 10, let's go back there just for a moment. In verse 10, he says, create in me, and I'm focusing on me, and I pray that you're focusing on you. Is that all right? Sometimes we always focus on other people, but we need to be asking God to help us with us. Amen. Isn't it strange that uh, we can always easily focus on someone else when, when we can't even get our own selves together? Isn't that something? But he says, create in me... A clean heart, O oh God. Now this word create is the same word that's used in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created. Now I want to share something with you about this word. This word, when you look at the definition of it, means causing that to exist which did not exist before. The idea what, what David is speaking is not so much as I need something, God, to exist that didn't exist before, but David's real focus is on the fact that God was the cause in the beginning. Y'all ain't getting that. David is saying, I, I need you to cause something to happen because I recognize now in my brokenness, I can't make it happen. Is that all right? So this is uh, an encouragement to us, amen, that we need to have faith and we need to come to recognize in our faith that God is able, God alone is able to make our hearts clean and pure. And that's what he's asking for. He's asking for God, uh, I don't want you to uh, put something in me that, that didn't exist before. I want you to just cleanse me thoroughly. I need a thorough cleaning. I need to be pure. Is that all right? And sometimes we, we try to uh, purge ourselves, but there's no purging like when God purges. Are we getting this? But I want you to understand that it goes even beyond this and what he's asking because notice what he says. Again, he says, create in me a clean heart, O God. But then he says, watch this, and renew a right spirit within me. Is that a right? Now he's focusing on remake something that was previously there. But when you remake something that was previously there, I need you to cause something to happen in, in, the, in the remaking of it that I can't do. He says, renew a right spirit within me. Right meaning sincere. Right meaning upright. Right meaning proper. Right meaning true, but most of all, right meaning constant, continual, and fixed. In other words, he's saying, when, when, you, when you remake the spirit within me, Lord, I want you to make it so that it's constant, so that it's continual, so that it's fixed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So in other words, when you put these two together, Here's what he's saying all together. He's saying, do more than just forgive me. Do more than just cleanse me. Do more than just purify me. Create in me a clean heart 
and renew a right spirit within me so that I might truly serve you for the rest of my life. In other words, God, I don't, I don't want to ever get to a point again where I make mistakes and stop serving you. I want you to fix me so that I can stay consistent in my worship and in my service to you. Because in my brokenness, I've come to realize that it's not about me, it's all about you. I want you to create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Not so that people can see that I'm all that. You see, sometimes we want God to, to fix things in our lives so that other people can revere us and look at us like we're something. Is that all right? But that's the wrong motivation. And this is not David's motivation. David's motivation is I'm broken and I ain't worried about how people look at me. I know that I messed up with you and I'm disappointed, I'm broken, I'm crushed because I hurt you. No relationship matters more than this relationship with God. Are we getting this? So he's really helping us to understand the focus of us asking God to cleanse us and renew a right spirit is not for us to look good, not for us to feel better about ourselves, but for us to truly be continual, fixed, and constant servants of God. Because we've come to a point to recognize that I don't want to disappoint him never again. So you see, as we said earlier, it's only in our brokenness uh, that we can truly come to recognize and understand truly that it's not about us at all, but it's all about him. And as we've shared seemingly all week, it's, it's amazing how the spirit of God just works from our, our lesson on Wednesday through our lesson on Thursday, through our lesson on Saturday, through our lessons today, because none of us want to go through being broken. And I, I promise I don't got no cupcakes tonight to, to crush, all right? But none of us want to go through being broken, but it's necessary. It's necessary that God allows us, and we just talked about Job. It's necessary that God allows us to go through the fire of hell in life because it's our brokenness, it's our breaking points that get us to want to seek the Lord genuinely and sincerely. You see, when things are going okay in your life, you're not, you're not seeking God as you should or like you normally would. But let some trouble come your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I need you. God, I need your help. I'm in trouble. You know, we need to start living from a, a proactive way. That even in good times, you, you see, when Paul said, in all things I've learned to be content, understand, he learned how to be content when things are good too. In other words, when things are so-called good, I know that I humble myself to make sure I know, guess what? I'm still going to praise God. I'm still going to give him the praise that he deserves. I'm not going to think more highly of myself than I ought to. Things are never as good as they seem or as bad as they seem. Is that all right? Are we getting this? Notice then, he's coming to recognize that it's not just about him, it's all about God. And notice what he says in verse 15. This is something that's really unique. He says, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. In other words, I'm, I'm to a point where I'm so broken I need you to open up my mouth. 
I'm, I'm so in distress that I can't even bring myself to give you the praise that I know you deserve. Y'all ain't understanding what I'm saying. Some of y'all ain't been there. Some of y'all ain't been through some hell and high waters to where when you come to worship God, you can't even get it out. Because you're so broken inside. You come to a point where you recognize that no one will ever or could ever be there for me like God is. And God had to break you to show you that. So he's asking, oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall so forth thy praise. I'm going to do it, but I can only do it when you do what you can only do. But there's something else. Watch this. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. In other words, I, 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 I want to do these things, but in my brokenness, I've come to realize that it's not those sacrifices that you, that you approve of or that you want in this situation. God doesn't want your singing. God doesn't want your clapping. Watch what he says in verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. In other words, I've disappointed God. Coming to church and singing ain't going to fix it. Can't come here and act like just singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs is going to fix what I did to the Lord. The Lord is saying, you hold on to that. There's something that I require other than that. In other words, that, that won't be acceptable until you have something else first. He says a, a broken spirit. What does this mean? A mind which is broken and crushed to the point of becoming completely subdued. Broken. Broken spirit. Let me read it again. A mind which is broken and crushed to the point of becoming completely subdued. In other words, you know, sometimes we say in life, you know, when, we, when people try to get us to do things that we not necessarily always want to do. And we say, well, I got a mind of my own. Well, guess what? God will allow you to go through some things and break you down. And when he talks about being broken, it, it's not just broke like it's two pieces. No, we're talking about broken into pieces. Pieces. Ain't no getting some Gorilla Glue and putting this back together. Is that all right? Are, are we getting this? So he's saying, listen, I, I'm going to, uh, since you still got a mind of your own, I'm going to allow you to continue to be broken and crushed until you recognize that you don't have a mind of your own anymore. Keep on having a mind of your own if you want to. But that's what's got you in the mess to begin with. You had a mind of your own. When I don't want you to have your mind, I want you to have the mind of my son. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's the problem. We're trying to walk after Jesus with our own mind. And God is going to break us down systematically. And notice, God is long-suffering and patient. And he takes us each and every day through our brokenness. And he whispers by the spirit, you still got your mind today? 
Still got your own mind? Okay, come on. Let's go through it again. Go, we're going to have to take, like Willie preached, we're going to have to take the same test over again. Still got your own mind? Okay, come on. We're going to take the same test again. Lord, have mercy. No, I don't have my own mind no more. But we have to mean it. Because while we can fake one another out, you know, uh, all my dad had to do was raise the belt. I learned my lesson. Once he raised the belt, daddy, I learned my lesson. Can't do that with God. God knows your heart. And that's what he wants to break. He wants to break your heart so that he can save your soul. Then he says, a broken spirit. Then he says, a broken and contrite heart. Now this word contrite is basically the same as broken. But when they're used together, broken and contrite, and we learned this in the Hebrew class yesterday, in the Hebrew they use terms that were parallel to really stress the intensity that's being used here. So they're used together to, to really intensify and emphasize that that's what God really wants. He wants us to be broken and contrite. Is that all right? Into pieces. And watch this. These are the sacrifices that without which, without your and my heart being broken and contrite, without our spirit being broken, without these sacrifices, first and foremost, no other sacrifice we do unto the Lord or give unto the Lord will be accepted, approved, or shown favor by God. Are y'all getting this? Even Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Yes, I'm going to the cross for you. Yes, I paid the price for you. But until it won't make no matter, never mind for you, until you repent. Y'all ain't getting that. You say, well, Christ died for me. I have the blood of Christ. Yes, you have the blood of Christ, but until you have this sacrifice first and foremost, along with that, that sacrifice is null and void to you and I if we don't have a penitent heart, a contrite spirit. In other words, we can't just show up like nothing happened. You ever had that happen to you? Someone offended you, someone really did you wrong and hurt you, and they act like ain't nothing ever happened. How you doing today? You all right? Why are you looking like that? Did I, do, did I do something to you? God is saying, no, things, things are not right until you get your heart right. He says, oh God, Thou would not despise. Second Corinthians, in my closing, says it like this. Second Corinthians 17. In the New Living Translation. Says. For the kind of sorrow. God wants us to experience. Leads us away from sin. And results in salvation. There is no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, that means a change of mind, results in spiritual death. God is saying, you can think of any way you want to to Offer me something to make things right. But what I desire most 
is for your spirit to be broken. Your heart to be broken. Your heart to be contrite. That's what I want. Then, and only then, when you're broken and you truly understand, then and only then, I'll accept your sacrifices and everything else. But I want your heart. We sit up sometimes and play like, you know, we can just go through the motions. But remember, God is looking at the heart. I want to challenge you. Next week, we come back for worship. Again, if the Lord blesses us to say the same and do the same. Prepare your heart before the Lord's day. Don't show up and then wait to try and get your heart ready. Prepare your heart beforehand. Is that all right? And then see how in spirit and in truth your worship truly is. It's all about your heart. It's all about your my heart. Some things need to be broken. And God be praised that he, lo he loves us enough to go through some experiences to where we become broken so that we can truly seek him and that he can make us whole and heal us. God be praised. Is that all right? I've said enough. If you're here this evening and you've not obeyed the gospel, I want to give to you the greatest invitation ever known to man. You can come having heard the word. Do you believe it? Are you willing to repent of your sins, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and in obedience be buried in baptism for the remission of your sins? For those of us who have obeyed the gospel, let us never take this for granted, what we've been blessed to do today. We've been blessed to come together as God's own special people to worship him in spirit and in truth without fear of persecution. So thank God that we were able to come together, glorify him and praise him, and edify one another. Is that all right? Well, let us consider. Let us not always look at things in our lives that are troubling us. Let us not always look at it as if, you know, I'm just being done wrong. Maybe God is doing some breaking and some crushing in order for me to surrender myself fully and allow him to have his way so that he can mold me and fashion me to what he wants. Amen about it. Yes. Consider where you are as we together stand and sing the words of encouragement.